Well, it's official. My last cruise of 2020 has been canceled, along with everyone else's. That story and more coming up next on the Cruise News Week in Review. Welcome to the Cruise World's Cruise News Week in Review. My name is Mark, and it's time to get caught up on a very busy week of news in the cruise world. As we discussed last week, the CDC lifted the ban on sailing in the U.S. and released a comprehensive framework allowing a path to return to cruising. Well, that laundry list of to-dos proved to be too hefty a load to lift in 2020, and Norwegian Cruise Line was the first to drop the hammer and cancel all of the remaining 2020 cruises. But the others quickly followed. And then the Cruise Line International Association put the final nail in the coffin on Tuesday when they announced that all of their member lines would cancel all cruises for paying passengers this year. Now, the lines may still be doing test cruises this year, and as of right now, it is unclear exactly how the companies will choose the test passengers for those sailings. But I'm still waiting for my call. While I wait for that phone to ring, I think this is a good time to ask you to please consider subscribing to the channel. We love bringing you entertaining videos as well as the week's cruise news. And if you enjoy the updates, please hit that subscribe button. It's free, of course, and it helps us continue to bring creative content from the cruise world. As you know, there were three big cruise referendums on the ballot in Key West Tuesday, and the residents there approved all three measures. And here's what that means. The city has put a cap on the daily number of cruise ship passengers at 1,500. And it also prohibits ships with a capacity of more than 1,300 people from docking. That effectively eliminates all the major players in the cruise industry, as even their smallest ships carry more than 1,300 passengers. And even if two or more small cruise liners did visit Key West, the logistics could prove to be a nightmare to try and keep that daily total under 1,500. But that's not all. The city will also now give priority to ships with the best environmental and health records. So I guess for big cruise fans like me who don't typically sail on the smaller, often expensive luxury liners, Key West as a cruise port destination will become nothing more than a memory. Now, I really feel bad for the business owners in the area who really benefit from the daily influx of tourists and have already struggled more than ever this year with the coronavirus. Who knows? Maybe they'll strike up a legal battle to oppose the election outcome. That does seem to be a thing. Money line, I'm a to do a check of our money on Wall Street, and overall it was a very good week. The top cruise stocks did do a little bit of a roller coaster ride, finishing slightly down for the day yesterday, but all three did finish just above their closing points from last week. We're living in the age of the coronavirus, and just like all of us, the cruise lines are adapting to the times. Viking Cruise Lines have announced that they have completed installation of the first full-scale PCR laboratory at sea on board the 930-passenger Viking Star. The lab has the capacity to administer daily testing for all crew and passengers with a non-invasive saliva test. Viking plans to demonstrate their state-of-the-art PCR laboratory and other new design and operating procedures later this month in Oslo, Norway. Now, last weekend, I told you that German cruise line TUI would continue sailing in Germany despite the country's recent lockdown, but a directive from local authorities earlier this week shut down their cruises to nowhere from Kiel, Germany. And now a corona-related lockdown in Greece that takes effect today will be shutting down their operations there as well. TUI's Mein Schiff 6 will be allowed to carry out their scheduled trip to Greece from November 8th to the 14th, without shore excursions, of course, but they will have to cancel their November 14th, 21st, and 28th sailings. And TUI isn't the only line affected by the new restrictions in Greece. The Costa Deliciosa, which has been offering week-long cruises there, announced that they will be canceling their sailings through December 19th. Costa hopes to resume operations for the Deliciosa on December 26th in Italy. Recent lockdowns in France and Germany have prompted MSC to suspend operations of the Magnifica starting tomorrow. 
The bulk of passengers on the Magnifica come from France and Germany, so this really was a no-brainer for the company. Uh, they hope to have the ship back in service on December 18th for an eight-night Christmas voyage. MSC has also canceled the Magnifica's 199-day, 52-destination world cruise that was set to sail on January 5th of next year, and instead the Magnifica is now scheduled to resume her current 10-night Mediterranean itineraries following that Christmas voyage. If a world cruise is on your bucket list and you've got enough vacation days on the books to take off half of 2022, might you consider sailing the Seabourn Sojourn? In an optimistic sign for the industry, the luxury line reports strong booking for its 145-day 2022 world cruise. It departs from Los Angeles on January 11th with stops in Hawaii, the South Pacific, New Zealand, Australia, Asia, Arabia, and Africa before ending in Athens, Greece on June 6, 2022. The voyage is already 50% sold on segments through the halfway point in Shanghai. So check that out if you're interested. The Italian government approved a new soft lockdown on Friday for some of the country's harder hit regions, which is in effect until December 3rd, which is in fact my birthday for all of you generous gift givers. And speaking of gifts, the government has decided to let the cruise industry continue operating from those Italian ports. So for now, MSC and Costa will continue to sail in Italy, while AIDA has paused their operations due to lockdowns in their main source market of Germany. Even in these tough times for the cruise industry, there are flashes of light, and earlier this week was one such occurrence. As Royal Caribbean Group member Silver Sea Cruises took delivery of their newest ship, the Silver Moon. The Silver Moon boasts 298 spacious suites and one of the highest space-to-guest ratios of any luxury cruise line. Chief Executive of the Royal Caribbean Group Richard Fain said that the Silver Moon represents the pinnacle of luxury travel and that he looks forward to welcoming guests on board in the near future. Bookings for January and February 2021 are currently available, so check out SilverSea.com if relaxing in the lap of luxury is your thing. And finally, a heartwarming story from Arosa Cruises. Arosa is a cruise line based in Rostock, Germany, that operates river cruises with their 11 ships. Following the German restrictions that recently forced cruise companies there to pause operations, Arosa had a lot of fresh food on board their Rhine ships, which the company has now donated all of those unused perishable goods to charity in Cologne. So even in tough times, good people are doing good things and helping out those that are less fortunate. I want to thank you for tuning in to the news program today. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. I will let you know that I am working hard on a new cruise parody song and music video, and I hope to have that out very soon. So please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any of our cruise and travel content. Let me know down in the comments when your next scheduled cruise is and how you feel about it. Be safe, everyone, and I will see you again next week.